Welcome to our presentation today on installing Zimbra in the Oracle Cloud or how to deploy an open source cloud-based email service quickly. Oracle today offers a platform as a service in the Oracle Cloud for supporting your business infrastructure needs. Zimbra 8.7 is now officially supported on Oracle Linux. A single server Zimbra instance can be created and configured in about 40 minutes using orchestrations and Chef in the Oracle Cloud. Using orchestrations and Chef, Zimbra can easily be scaled to support large cloud-based email collaboration deployments. Before we go much further, let's talk about some of the key concepts for this technology. The first one is instances. Instances represent virtual servers in the Oracle Cloud. Orchestrations are a set of instructions in JSON format for automating the creation of instances, network settings, and storage volumes. Chef is a tool to manage infrastructure configuration, including software deployments using recipes, template files, and resources. Shapes are the specifications for the number of virtual CPUs and the amount of memory allocated to an instance. Before you get started in this process, you'll need to create an Oracle Cloud Service account. Then you'll upload your SSH key to allow access to the instances that you'll be creating. You want to download and customize the sample orchestrations to match your requirements. In there, you'll need to specify your identity domain, your account name, and your SSH key. You want to update the orchestrations to refer to the latest images for Oracle Linux and Zimbra. And you'll want to set the appropriate storage volume size and host name for your environment. Another step you'll need to take is you'll want to establish an account for relay, relaying outbound email with a provider like SendGrid, Mailgun, or MailJet. This is because the Oracle Cloud does not currently allow outbound on port 25. It's real easy to do this. Uh, after you create your orchestrations, you'll upload them to the Oracle Cloud. You'll launch the storage orchestration and note that it's important which order the orchestrations are installed or run. After your storage partitions are set to ready, you'll launch the instance orchestration, and then you'll configure your Zimbra instance. So let's talk about what's in the storage orchestration. First of all, it will define a security list that will be used to associate security applications with your instance. It will reserve an external IP address that will be used by clients to connect to your mail server. It will create security applications, which are IP port definitions that will allow inbound traffic to your instance. And then it will create two storage volumes, an OS boot volume that will have the Oracle Linux 6.6 .6 image or whichever one you prefer pre-installed, and it will create a separate Zimbra data volume. In the instance orchestration, we will associate the security rules that you've previously created to the security applications that allow inbound connections to your Zimbra server. Then we'll create the instance. And in that creation, we'll specify the security list for the instance so that, so that the security applications are applied. We will associate the external IP address that we previously created with that instance. We'll define the shape of the instance, and in the case of the example that we're showing today, we're using the OC4 shape, which corresponds to two virtual CPUs and 15 gigabytes of RAM. We will connect the storage volumes that we defined previously to this instance, and we'll define the chef recipe that will be downloaded and used to install Zimbra. If the download is successful, Zimbra will be installed. Next, well, let's take a look at the chef recipe. A chef recipe will include formatting a raw partition that we created in our storage environment. We will mount a file system called op slash Zimbra on the partition and set the permissions appropriately. We will run a command to optimize the file system per Zimbra's rec recommendations. We will configure the template files based on the environment, which means updating the Zimbra configuration file 
that will be used for the installation on the instance. We will update the Etsy host file with the correct IP address and host name for this instance needed for the Zimbra installation. We will update the Etsy sysctl.conf file to optimize Linux memory configuration for the Zimbra mail service and the TCP IP parameters that work best with Zimbra. The Chef recipe will download the Zimbra software. It will download a trial license. It will extract the installation files, install Zimbra prerequisites, and then install Zimbra. I mentioned earlier the Chef template files, and there are three files that are used by Chef. Two will be updating operating system files, the Etsy host file and the Etsy sysctl.conf file. And then it'll also be updating the Zimbra installation file, which includes things like the packages that will be installed associated with this Zimbra instance, the port configuration, the host name, and several other items. After Zimbra has been installed, you'll need to go in and configure Zimbra. This will include setting the administrative password for Zimbra. If you're using the Zimbra Network Edition, you'll need to install your own Zimbra license. You'll need to configure your, your email domain and the accounts that will be sending and receiving email associated with this. And most customers will want to add a com commercial certificate for their environment. This means that when browsers or clients connect, they won't get certificate warnings. Then you'll need to set up the outbound mail relay in, uh, configuration, which is what we referred to earlier with SendGrid, MailGun, or MailJet, or several others of those. You'll want to consider adding a separate backup partition. This would be done in a separate storage orchestration that defines a different partition where you'll mount the OpZimbra backup file system on that storage partition from within your Linux environment. If you're doing a migration, you'll need to migrate your email, context, and calendar, and other data from your existing email environment to the Zimbra environment. And then, when you get ready to go live, you'll need to update your DNS, host, and MX records to point to your new instance. For those of you who are already familiar with the Oracle Cloud environment, we'll make several recommendations here. The first one is that if you're creating your own storage volumes for Zimbra data, you'll want to use the storage slash latency as the storage property for volumes. If you're creating the separate Zimbra backup volume, you can use the storage NFS property. You want to make sure to create your OS partition with the preloaded Oracle Linux boot image. And OC4 should be sufficient for smaller Zimbra instances. You might also consider the OC5 shape. Uh, more powerful shapes will certainly be needed if you have larger loads. Some additional notes here is that if you stop your orchestration, you will lose all of your Zimbra data but you can go in and reboot your server anytime. You do have to have an outbound email relay service. Since port 25 is not allowed to outbound from the Oracle Cloud, this is to prevent spammers from setting up servers in the environment. Um, we'll note that the Oracle Cloud does not currently support snapshots for persistent disk. And when you create an instance in the Oracle Cloud, it will define your fully qualified domain name It'll use the host name that you provide, but then it will specify the rest of the domain, the fully qualified domain name as compute-myidentitydomain.oraclecloud.internal. Here you can see some additional links that will be helpful. The first one is our wiki article that describes how to use Chef and Zimbra in the Oracle Cloud which is what we'll be going through today. We have a separate wiki article if you want to just use uh, an installation of Zimbra with Chef, and then several other places that you'll need later. So now let's take a look at the wiki articles that we just referred to. It starts off with an overview that we've already covered here and some of the assumptions that we've referred to, and then it has an example storage orchestration. 
You can see here in the storage orchestration that we're creating a security list that we're defining here. We're defining the IP reservation that will create an external IP address that clients will access the Zimbra server with. We'll be defining the security applications such as which ports will be opened to allow access to the Zimbra instance. And then we define the storage volumes. In this case, we're defining two storage volumes. The first one is the boot and the OS volume, which has the bootable set to true, and it defines the image that will be installed on this boot volume. And then it defines the size. The next volume that we define is the Zimbra data volume. And you'll notice here that we've set the property as storage slash latency. And in this case, we've set the volume size to 500 gigabytes. In the instance orchestration, we go through and create security rules. And we associate the previously defined uh, security list and the IP list with the action associated with that security rule. Then we go through the instance definition. Here's where we define our host name. We associate the security list with that Zimbra instance and associate the IP address with that Zimbra instance. We define the boot order, the size or the shape of the instance that we're creating. We associate the storage um, volumes that we previously created. We define the SSH key that we'll be using to connect to the Zimbra instance. And then in the attributes section, we in we indicate that Chef is to be run and download this cookbook from this location in order to do the installation of Zimbra. After Zimbra is installed, we'll use this command to set the password for the administrative account. If we're using a Network Edition version of Zimbra, we will um, install the license file and activate it. We'll configure Zimbra with the domain name and accounts that will be used for our email environment and possibly install a commercial certificate. There are other wiki articles that describe how to do this if you're not familiar with the process. Then we will do the configuration for the outbound SMTP service, possibly add a separate backup partition. Then after the data has been migrated, if you need to do that, you will update your DNS records uh, as part of your cutover. We've also included in this wiki article the configuration that would be needed for the relay host if you're using SynGrid. Using the other services will require a custom setup based on their configuration. The next art article that we'll review is the article on installing Zimbra using Chef. If you already have a Linux instance, you can download Chef and run the cookbook that we've described here and install Zimbra directly. What we've created here is a sample default recipe. In this recipe, we start off by formatting the partition. You'll need to be very careful with this if you're doing this in your environment to make sure that you define the right um, path for your partition. We're setting the appropriate permissions for that partition. We're mounting that partition on the OpZimbra file system. We're optimizing the file system for writes because Zimbra is a very write intensive application. We're taking the template file and configuring it for our environment. We're updating the host file to, um, for the right IP address and host name. We're updating the sysctl.conf file. We're downloading the Zimbra installation files, a Zimbra trial license. We're extracting the installation files, installing the prerequisites, and then running the script to install Zimbra automatically. We've also included in this wiki article some other template files or references that you'll need to get Chef running in your environment. One of the things we'll point out here are these are the network parameters that we define in the sys, uh, I'm sorry, the etsy sysctl.conf file 
and setting swappiness for virtual memory to zero. And then we have the sample configuration file for a Zimbra installation. And at the bottom here, we're defining the packages to be installed for this Zimbra environment. Next, let's review how this looks in the Oracle Cloud. Here you see the orchestrations that we've created. We have the storage orchestration and the instance orchestration. When I uploaded these orchestrations, I started the storage orchestration first and waited until the status was set to ready. And then I launched the instance orchestration. When we ran the storage orchestration, it created the two storage volumes that we've described earlier. One is the OS partition with Oracle Linux 6.6 .6 pre-installed, and the next was the Zimbra data partition. The orchestrations also set up our network configuration settings. Now, there's a set of default settings that come with every Oracle Cloud instance, but these shown here are the ones that were created as part of the Zimbra installation process. I'm sorry, the orchestration process. We also associated a security list for the instance that associated the applications with the instance. Here's where we define the security applications and the previously defined applications for the Oracle Cloud with the Zimbra ports defined at the bottom. We have our IP reservation for this instance. That'll be the public IP address that we'll access the Zimbra server with from clients. And we have the SSH key that was uploaded at the very beginning. Once the instance orchestration is completed, we'll be able to see the instance running here in the cloud. And again, the OC4 shape represents two virtual CPUs and 16 or 15 gigabytes of RAM. Next, let's take a look at how this looks when it's actually up and running. As you can see in the address bar here, I've associated one of my training domains, zm-train.com, with this instance using my DNS host records and MX records. You can also see that I installed this using a trial license, which is good for, 50, uh, for 62 days when you do the installation. And then after this was set up, I went into configure. I added my own email domain, zm-train.com. I went into the server configuration and set up the mail relay host associated with sending outbound email. In this case, I'm using smtp.sendgrid.net on port 587 for outbound email. And then under user accounts, I created my first user, user1 at zm-train.com. Thank you for joining us today. For more information or assistance with purchasing a Zimber license, please contact your local Zimber reseller. For assistance with the Oracle Cloud, contact your Oracle partner or local reseller.